I just came back from Wisconsin yesterday. We got a governor there who wants to destroy the trade union movement. Well, I've got some bad news for him. Together, we are going to rebuild the trade union movement in this country. Because as you have just heard, when workers in unions are negotiating good contracts, everybody in this country benefits. An expanded and growing trade union movement is the future of the American middle class. And let me also agree with Ryan, it is time to rethink this war on drugs. Too many lives have been destroyed. Um, when we talk about why the middle class is disappearing, when we talk about why 47 million people are living in poverty, when we talk about why in this country we have more wealth and income inequality than almost any major country on earth, we have got to talk about our disastrous trade policies that have cost this country millions of decent paying jobs. Over the last 35 years, our trade agreements have been rigged by corporate America to shut down manufacturing plants in Vermont, in Pennsylvania, and throughout this country, throw workers out on the street, and move to Mexico, China, and other low-wage countries where workers are paid pennies an hour. Let me just repeat a story I just mentioned uh, to the people behind me a few minutes ago. Back in the early 1990s, when NAFTA was being debated, I went to Mexico to look at uh, the workers there, to meet with workers there who are now doing the work that many workers in Pittsburgh or Vermont had previously done. And when I went to the Maquiladora area in Mexico, what I saw was shiny, state-of-the-art new factories owned by American corporations and European corporations. Beautiful new factories. And I said, I want to meet with some of the workers there, and I want to visit them in their homes. Problem was, I could not visit those Mexican workers in their homes because they did not have homes to live in. They were literally living in cardboard shacks with filthy water running by as their source of water, one electric bulb dangling from someplace. They were making back then, this is the early 1990s, 25 cents an hour. And it became clear to me that trade policy cannot be a policy in which American workers are forced to compete against people making pennies an hour. Now, all of us want to uplift poor people around the world. We can do that without destroying the middle class of this country. Now, on this issue, which is an enormously important issue to working people, not an issue the media pays a whole lot of attention to, but let me be very clear that on this issue, Secretary Hillary Clinton and I have very strong differences of opinion, going way, way back. Not only did I oppose NAFTA, I stood on picket lines with workers in opposition to this disastrous trade agreement. Secretary Clinton supported NAFTA. Instead of creating jobs, NAFTA cost us jobs, 850,000 jobs, including over 26,000 jobs here in Pennsylvania. Not only did I oppose permanent normal trade relations with China, I stood with steel workers and the United Electrical Workers in opposition to it. Secretary Clinton, on the other hand, supported PNTR with China. Instead of creating jobs, as we were told by corporate America, normalized trade with China cost us three 0.2 million American jobs, including over 120,000 jobs here in Pennsylvania. Let me just give you a few examples. You've heard some examples of the impact of disastrous trade agreements. Let me give you a few more. 2013, General Electric announced that it would be eliminating 950 jobs at its Pennsylvania locomotive plant in Erie 
moving those jobs to Mexico. Last year, Allegheny Technology shut down two steel plants in western Pennsylvania, laying off 600 workers due to a surge in cheap imports from China. 2009, Hershey shut down its York Peppermint Patties plant in Reading, destroying 300 good-paying jobs and move that plant to Monterey, Mexico, where workers are paid a fraction of what they were paid in Pennsylvania. 2008, Sony closed down the last TV manufacturing plant in the United States of America in Westmoreland, destroying 560 jobs, and they moved that plant to Baja, Mexico. And it's not just Pennsylvania, of course. We have lost since 2001 almost 60,000 factories in America. Not all of it is attributable to trade, but a lot of it is. Our trade policy must change. Corporations must start investing in Pennsylvania, in Vermont, throughout the United States, not just searching for cheap labor in every part of the world. American workers, you know, you talk about free trade. Well, let me tell you, American workers should not be forced to compete with workers in Vietnam who are paid 65 cents an hour, which is what the minimum wage is in Vietnam. American workers should not have to compete with migrant workers, people who are coming into Malaysia who are working as modern day slaves people who have had their passports and their wages confiscated and are unable to return home to their native countries. That is not free trade. That is the race to the bottom. And that is why I am helping to lead the opposition in the Senate to the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Sadly, as Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton spoke favorably about the TPP some 45 times. In fact, she called it the gold standard of trade agreements. Now she says she has reservations about it, and when a whole lot of people put pressure on her, she decided to oppose it. Well, let me be very clear what I will do if elected president. I will not renegotiate the TPP, I will reject it. I will not send any trade deals to Congress that will make it easier for corporations to shut down in this country and move abroad. I will not send any trade deal to Congress that it would increase the price of prescription drugs which is what the TPP would do, deregulate Wall Street or undermine by American laws. That is what I won't do. This is what I will do. I will fundamentally rewrite NAFTA, CAFTA, PNTR with China, and the Korean Free Trade Agreement. We have got to lift up the standard of living of workers in this country and throughout the world. Trade is a good thing but it has got to be based on fair principles, not unfettered free trade. <laughs> and let me just add a point here, which is not often made. Uh, sometimes when a factory shuts down and hundreds or thousands of workers are thrown out on the street, it is apparent to everybody what a disastrous trade agreement is about. But what is more subtle, what is not often seen, is what we call the race to the bottom. And what that means is that an employer says to a worker, well, listen, you're going to have to pay far more for health care. We're going to have to lower your wages. And if you don't accept that, we're going to move to China or Mexico. Those are your options. Mm -hmm. Either take a cut in your standard of living or we move abroad. And the result of that 
is that in industry after industry, many of the new manufacturing jobs and blue collar manufacturing jobs used to be the gold standard for American workers in this country, middle class jobs. What is happening now is that many of those jobs are now paying 10, 11, 12 bucks an hour, wages that people cannot live on. So we have got to take this issue head on. What we have got to do is to say that trade agreements have got to work for these people and their families, not just the CEOs of large corporations. You know, every night, every night on television, you see all the ads from all the multinationals. And they say, buy this product and buy that product. We want you to buy our products. Well, if they want us to buy their products, the time is long overdue for them to start manufacturing those products back here in the United States. When we rebuild manufacturing in America, when we rebuild the trade union movement so that workers have the right to negotiate good contracts, when we raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour rather than the $7.25 minimum wage today, which is a starvation wage, when we rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, that is our water plants and our wastewater plants and our roads and our bridges, and our levees and our dams and our airports and our rail system. We can put millions of people back to work at decent paying jobs. We can make this country more productive and safer. So what our job together is to create an economy that works for all of our people, not just the 1%, not just the CEOs in corporate America. Thank you very much.